Okay, what's up, guys? So, WrestleMania, they have uploaded a video titled 10 WWE Wrestlers Who Were Forced to Lose a Match. I would imagine, like, that would be messed up. Like, you, uh, you know, you, you out here trying to... Well, I mean, like, because I know some of the matches are scripted uh, to where it's, you know, somebody's going to, you know, win or somebody's going to lose. But to be forced, I definitely... That has to hands down. Well, what? Yeah, it wasn't WWE. That hands down is going to have to be in this compilation, the Montreal Screwjob. Because um, there was even, like, he wasn't even forced. Like, they straight up just, they, it was going to happen. Like, that's, man, that's messed up. That's messed up that uh, WWE would do that. And then the fact that there's 10, there's like nine other situations. Like, bro, it's insane. WWE can be a crazy business, but. Anyways, um, it's crazy. I was like, at one moment in point in time in my life, I really wanted to wrestle for WWE. I was, I, I was reading books, trying to get the magazines. I was studying the moves. I was doing everything. But it's a, it's a scary place, man. It could be a scary place just with all this stuff that goes down. But if you guys haven't, make sure you guys go subscribe to WrestleMania. They must have just recently hit a million subscribers. So if that, if they just recently did, congratulations, Wrestle, um, WrestleMania. Um, oh, it was one of my friends. They were, I recommended, they was, uh, wanting to know what Netflix movie they should watch. And I recommend, I recommend the movie Due Date with Robert Downey Jr. and Jack Galifianakis. It's a pretty good movie. You should watch it. But anyways, this was, I did not watch that WrestleMania. That was a WrestleMania that I skipped out on. But when I always go on Wikipedia, like after any pay-per-view to read, when I seen that Brock Lesnar beat Undertaker, I I started panicking. I was like, no, 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 no. I did not invest all this time, okay, and money into WWE for this, for this thing, this one very thing to just, why, why? Just, no, they shouldn't have, that, now that shouldn't have happened. I'll admit, that, that one thing shouldn't have happened. I wonder if they're now, gonna show that black guy. Wrestling being scripted, wins and losses matter. It can be oh, hugely detrimental to a character for them to lose to a certain wrestler, and it can seriously damage their position as a top star. Uh, over the years, there have been some outright refusals oh, from yeah. talents to put someone over in a match. That was. People, they just they. I don't know. Like I want to say that. Randy Orton wasn't like angry, but I guess just you know he he was, but I don't know. I'm just I'm curious. That's not like that's how you gotta like see them like face to face and ask them. And Stone Cold not willing to put over Brock Lesnar on Raw in 2002, and John Cena not willing to put over the Nexus at SummerSlam 2010. Yes, those big wrestlers they're to like do things a certain way, and we told him you're wrong. Remember that? And he did it anyways, and it sucked. And then afterwards, he came over to us and said, I should have listened to you, but I wasn't I wasn't seeing it that way. Now, whilst those superstars flat out refused to put that wrestler over, some I feel like Nexus, though, like to have a wrestler, particular wrestler uh, put you over, whether it's John Cena or anyone else, their debut and then the rest of their, like, excuse me, legacy, it seemed like that alone put them over. Like, it was bringing in viewers, it was bringing in attention, so having a wrestler, like, put them over, I'm like, I just don't see it being a thing, really, I don't know. They, it just, to me, personally, I think it's, like, stuff like that, how I would have done it, where they take out, like, all these different types of wrestlers, bring in wrestlers, whatever, and then wait till, like, WrestleMania or SummerSlam or something, and then have it where it's, like, okay, they're going up against John Cena, but it's, like, it has to be a good match. It can't be no, like, one, like, one hit done. Like, no, this got to be a match where it's, like, it's extreme, it's crazy, everybody is there, they watching it. Like, it's something where, of course, the wrestlers are safe, but, you know, it's it's going to be a good match. But anyway, it's like one to talk about. The job, despite their reservation and negativity surrounding their opponent. But which wrestlers were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE superstars who reluctantly agreed to put someone over. It's messed up, man. See, that's the thing. I'm like, because if I was a new wrestler and I know that that was going to happen, I'm just all like, dang. I think that's why I, I, I would want to like build a something like a foundation or something with that wrestler to just know like, hey, like, I'm sorry this it had to have been you. Like, you know, 
uh if they if that's who they chose like i'm sorry man like i just i don't you know i don't condone it like if it could be anybody else cool like i wouldn't mind that either but i'm you know i'm, I'm sorry that i'm sorry it had to be you be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists i seriously resent you for not putting me over three years ago when you should have that would have been best for business, but you had to come in and squash it. Number one, Neville putting over Enzo Amore. Mm. At the end of 2016, WWE decided to turn one of their best wrestlers, Neville Heel, for the first time in his career. I know that was crazy. Back to Japan, they're great friends. Oh, Neville blasted Swan! I, was I thought it was pretty say, good too. Great friends with Swan, he coached and he trained. I know he's supposed to be with AEW. I hadn't seen him in the longest. Like, dang. I'm like, yo, what he? Wow, all right. I mean, I hope he's, uh, hopefully he's all right. But dang, I was just like, I just got to think about. I'm like, dang, what happened? Like, As a where is of this man? Turn, Neville will become the face of the 205 Live brand and the cruiserweight division. This is a role that was acclaimed by lots of fans, and fans felt like Neville was doing some of the best work of his respective career. He was. 205 Live belongs to the king. And the problems came around nine months later when WWE decided to place Enzo Amore in the cruiserweight division. Now the issue here was that the 205 Live brand had built a reputation for having some of the best in-ring work in the entire company, and Enzo wasn't exactly the best wrestler in the world. Yeah, he was more of a microphone guy than a wrestler. I don't know, like he, mm, like yeah, I, I more so like Enzo for just the entertainment that he brought to the business. He he seemed like he could have he should have been more of an uh like a manager type figure in wrestling. He, Cause yeah, I'm like you know you're good on the microphone, so stick with that. Like I feel like if you want to be a good wrestler, you're gonna have to train, you're gonna have to widen your moves and stuff. Cause you're gonna have to do a lot to to the you know for the company and things. So. Neville reluctantly agreed to put over Enzo at the 2017 No Mercy pay-per-view. However, once he was asked to put Enzo over once again on Raw, Neville thought it was far too much and decided to quit the company and, and hasn't returned since. Because hmm. you're never going to get it if you lay a hand on me and you know it's a goal. Oh, Neville! <laughs> In a 2018 interview with Wrestling Inc, Neville offered some context to the decision. He stated, it wasn't really Enzo why I left. I don't mm. hate the lad, he was just annoying backstage and putting the title on him mm. was bad, especially beating me. I was worth more than being jobbed out to jobbers. That's why I left. I feel it. I Number feel two, it. Sid putting over Bob Holly. Now asking a top guy to lose to a jobber isn't always going to go down well. This was seen in 1996 when WWE decided to book Bob Holly to go over Psycho Sid at the WWE house show. Writing in his book The Hardcore Truth, Holly stated in January of 96, they, Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels, pushed it too far. He and I were traveling to the arena together and Sid came up to me after we'd arrived and said, how do you want to beat me? And I replied, if with me right hmm. and he says no we're wrestling tonight and they want you over hmm. holly would go on to add that sid found it so insulting that he was booked to lose to a guy so low down the wwe ladder he added i wasn't offended that he was mad at having to lose to me it was an insult to him here you have me who loses to everyone all the time and then you have sid this big monster and he had to put me over clean hmm. just to put things into perspective that was the year that Psycho Sid would become WWF champion. Number three, HBK. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I know if people would ask me, like, how would I feel about that? Like, if I was this big wrestler and then they want me to put over, I would do it more for it as in, like, advice situation. Like, I'm giving them advice and letting them know, like, hey, this is what the business can be, so don't let it get to you. Stuff like this. Like, I, I, cause I, I feel like that. If, let's say, for an example, if I have, like, a name like Steve Austin or Undertaker, or, you know, I have this big, giant name, I'm not going to lose fans just because I'm helping a guy. And I feel like as fans get older, like, as a kid, you're going to be like, oh, Undertaker lost. Oh, I'm so angry and upset now. But as you get older and you understand the wrestling business a little bit better, I feel like that 
something like that would just be like, oh, they, you know, he's doing it to help him in things. So I would be more so, yeah, if I see it as a helping situation, then okay. But if I see it as a punishment thing, like they're doing it to punish me, then that's when I would quit the business. But anyway, putting over Austin. Okay, Sarge, <clears throat> we'll start showing you some respect. <laughs> oh, Unbelievable. In 1998, Shawn Michaels wasn't the easiest person in the world to deal with. That's why when it came for HBK to drop the WWE title to Stone Cold at WrestleMania 14, a lot of people had doubts as to whether he would actually go through with it and put over the next big star in WWE. Famously, HBK did have reservations as he was extremely selfish at the time, even though this would be his last match in four years and putting over Austin wouldn't impact him in any way. Hmm. My time's been here. Austin is the champion. Stone Cold. Now, with many people having doubts backstage that he would actually do the job, the Undertaker decided he wanted to do what was best for business, and he taped up his fist backstage to ensure that HBK went through with putting over Austin and that there would be no issues on the night itself. Stone Cold hmm. on his podcast commented on the matter and he wow. did reveal that HBK wasn't too keen to drop the belt to him. He stated he had a bad back and he wasn't thrilled about dropping the title, but he certainly did and he was a complete pro about it. But I do not remember getting a chance <clears throat> to shake his hand or talk about the match. Hmm. That's probably why in the post-match conference, you'll hear Sean audibly get frustrated as he slammed the door behind him. He <laughs> wasn't a happy bunny that night. Number four, Jericho putting over Fandango. Fandango. He's, he's on uh, NXT or something like that. I, I, I think he is, because I think I did see something. I don't know. I, I just I hadn't seen him in the longest, but... Yeah, a lot of those wrestlers. I mean, look at Finn Balor. He went over to NXT. Finn Balor, Baylor, nah, you know, tomato, tomato, man. There's just certain ways of saying things. But anyways, um, but yeah. He got it. He got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But yeah, it's like, I feel like something like that. It's like Chris Jericho, you know, he shouldn't be uh, mad over something like that. You know, because it's like, you're Chris, you're Chris Jericho. This is Fandango. Who you think people are going to watch more? It's like, yeah, you, I just, I think wrestling, how it's set up, I think that they, there, there needs to be some changes, definitely hands down to how wrestlers are paid and just matches in general, not like what goes on in the match, but like what's surrounding the match, you know, like just pretty much just something where it's like, I just, I personally think that how they are handling wrestlers, they shouldn't handle it that way. But it's like, I, you know, but the whole putting a other wrestler over, I feel like that there should be more to it. So, you know, it could be like an equal like thing about it. Like it ain't like one's mad and the other one's like, oh, I don't know what's going on, but. Defeating Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 29 was one of the biggest upsets in WrestleMania history. However, if Jericho got his you way, kind of see the frustration in his face. Match. Although Y2J has attained a reputation of being one of the most selfless wrestlers of all time, he did indeed have doubts about losing to a new character who had never wrestled on television before. Writing in his book, Jericho stated, A few days before Mania, producer Dean Malenko called to tell me, much to my shock, that the finish was Fandango going over clean and I went berserk. I called Vince and started screaming that I was sick of this double-crossing bullshit. It was bad enough that he had changed my Mania match to Fandango, but he was now changing the finish too. Dang. Obviously, despite his reservations, he still went on to compete in the match and put Fandango over clean on the grandest stage of them all. It was also said that Jericho wanted to actually go for the IC title again and get his 10th mm. reign as champion, but Vince didn't care about that, nor the belt. Number five. Oh, I think I remember that in the previous video. Uh, I think I remember watching the WrestleMania video and then there was like Vince McMahon was all like, nobody cares about the Intercontinental Championship. I'm like, Angle wow, all right. Baron Corbin. Wait, they say Kurt? Huh, wow. Angle's out here dressed like Hunter S. Thompson. Just sneak attack the The 2018-2019 feud between Kurt Angle and Baron Corbin received a lot of negative reviews. It was extremely <laughs> underwhelming and Corbin wasn't the guy WWE fans wanted to see Angle feud with. And then when it was announced that Angle's last match ever would be against him at WrestleMania 35, fans were even more disappointed. <laughs> well, Sunday I have a match against Baron Corbin. And I'm excited to face him at WrestleMania. I really believe we're going to have a great match and the fans will not be disappointed. I can promise. 
Sonata star. Now, there were rumors going into the match that WWE would switch out Corbin in favor of John Cena as a callback to Cena's 2002 Oh, that would have been good. But this didn't happen. Angle and Corbin then had an extremely underwhelming match, which got little to no reaction. Here it comes. I ain't really, you know, something I wasn't really paying attention to. Of Kurt Angle. He got it. Kids are like, really? Notably, He's Angle like, I don't like this rivalry the and then Kurt Angle loses. <laughs> During a live Facebook Q&A, Angle stated, Honestly, my WrestleMania 35 match, I would have liked to go out with a win, but I understand yeah. why it didn't occur. Many people believe that I should have had a different opponent. It was kind of weird, maybe, though. Maybe not. In our it opinion, should have been him and John Cena. That had been really WWE good. We ever made. They could have got John Cena to retire him for good, and his career would have gone out with a bang yeah. rather than a whimper. Bad luck. Oh, come on! Yes! Angle slam! Number six, HBK putting over oh, Hulk yeah. Hogan. Well, on camera, yes. brother, I'm a great guy. But when that camera goes off, brother, oh, it's a different story, brother. Oh, brother, brother, brother. <laughs> the well-known backstory behind the SummerSlam 2005 match between Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan is that the two legends were supposed to take part in a trilogy of matches with the two men trading wins. However, Hogan nixed this idea, citing back problems for the reason for the cancellation of the feud. Mm. Hogan believed that they should do one match and that he should go over as he was the babyface of the feud and then the two wrestlers should go their separate ways. HBK, however, wasn't a fan of this idea and believed he should have got a win over Hogan as HBK was still a full-time performer. Hmm. Like, listen, I, 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 you Although gotta he hear that crowd. Go through putting over Hogan, he made a point to comically oversell everything <laughs> Hogan did in the match, the point that he was <laughs> mocking him. <laughs> He's like, who flies that high up in the air getting kicked? Number seven, CM Punk putting over The Rock. For once, it is not about CM Punk. But it is, but it is about CM Punk because it's about the WrestleMania main event. The CM Punk it just seemed like CM Punk, he didn't really like his time in WWE. I mean, maybe early on, but it just seemed like definitely them last, like last few days of WWE, yeah, CM Punk wasn't enjoying it. So something like this, him putting over the rock, they're all like, oh, then he got to like lose. Yeah, I think that maybe that stuff can't get to a person. I don't know. But um, yeah, he, yeah, he just seemed, like I said, he just didn't seem like he was liking his time. Into WrestleMania but. 29, that he should have been in the main event. Punk believed that the talent who had the best year leading up to WrestleMania should always find themselves in the main event as a way of rewarding their hard work. Yeah. Therefore, when Punk was informed at the start of 2013 that he would be dropping the title to The Rock at the Royal Rumble and he wouldn't be involved in the main event of WrestleMania, he was furious. And believe me, Vince has got the cash and he's vindictive enough to do it. So if Vince McMahon wants to screw me out of the WWE Championship, he's going to go ahead and do it. Punk admitted that he did everything he could to convince Vince McMahon that he was making the wrong decision and that the main event of WrestleMania should be a triple threat between The Rock, Punk, and John Cena. But nothing Punk could say could convince Vince been good. otherwise. Another people down yes! What do you gotta do to beat this guy? Cover! Cover the line! As we all hmm. know, Punk went on to lose to The Rock and found himself facing The Undertaker in the semi-main event of WrestleMania. Okay, like... Number eight, Y2J... I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I forgot about that. Are you, man, it's okay. You, you get put out of that. And then you end up having this, like, good big buildup. Because if they told me, like, oh, yeah, we're not going to have you fighting for the championship. Like, you're going to be fighting Undertaker. That's, equ that's almost equivalent to fighting for a championship. I get to have this big, crazy big up. So, of course, me losing at WrestleMania, I know if they had said, like, no, you win at WrestleMania, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want the fans to hate me. I, I would rather for it to be a really, like, a dope match, like, uh, freaking, yeah, the WrestleMania 25 when it was Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. You know, I would rather have, like, a memorable, good match, obviously take the L, but to be recognized as, like, yo, you went the distance, and that was a good fight. Like, that was, or it was a really, that was a really good match. That's I want to. I want it to be a match where it's like it's 
rewatchable. Like a person watches that match over and over and over and over again because it was that good. So that's the type of entertainment that I would want to if I if I was a wrestler. But anyway, putting over China. Welcome to Raw. Like rest in and peace, China. Jericho. When Chris Jericho made his WWE debut in August of 99, he was instantly one of the hottest stars in the entire company. But it was made apparent extremely quickly that WWE were trying to cool off Jericho for some undisclosed reason. One of the mm. ways they did this was by having Jericho lose to China on pay-per-view. It's crazy. Jericho revealed that he thought that this was a bad idea and felt like him putting over China would cool off his momentum. He stated during an appearance on Vince Russo's podcast, it was me versus China and they put her over on me and I just couldn't believe they would do that. Like really? I came in with so much steam. Now you're having me lose to China. I just couldn't believe that they put her over me, but they did. And I think we had a very good match that night. The problem was that the crowd didn't buy into the fact that she beat me and they booed her. And that was a real problem wow. that they booed China. Yeah. Number 9. Orton putting over Hulk Hogan When the WWE booked Hogan vs Orton at SummerSlam 2006, every WWE fan expected Hogan to put over Orton. However, yeah. this didn't occur. Despite numerous legends such as Mick Foley and The Rock all willing to work with Orton and put him over, Hogan decided not to do the same. A huge what about <laughs> now the reason behind this is that it was rumored that Hogan was campaigning backstage for him to win to build to an eventual Stone Cold Hogan match, but this obviously never happened. Hmm. It was rumored also at the time that the top WWE officials and Orton himself questioned the decision. Especially with Hogan not sticking around and Orton being one of the top stars in the company, it just made little sense for Hogan to go over in the match itself. Yeah. And number 10, The Fiend putting over Goldberg. Hmm. He can. He can. He will. Jackhammer covered by Goldberg. Shoulders down. He did it. Goldberg's the Universal Great. Champion. I can't believe it. The decision for Goldberg to defeat The Fiend Bray Wyatt for the Universal title at the start of 2020 was indeed a controversial one. The 53-year-old Goldberg coming back and virtually squashing one of WWE's best characters and almost invulnerable character was a move that didn't seem to have a lot of merit. The decision was made even worse when it was reported that it was initially planned for The Fiend to go over in the match and go on to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. However, it was reported that Goldberg decided to talk his way into winning the match and he pitched that WrestleMania would be more of a commercial success if he was to win that the title. Even happened. Additionally, it was reported that several top WWE officials and Bray himself questioned the decision as it was pretty much a done deal that Bray would be in one of the featured matches at WrestleMania against Reigns, but Vince clearly had other ideas. I'm next. But there you have it guys, 10 WWE yeah, superstars who reluctantly agreed to put someone over. Are oh, there yeah, any more that we're missing out? Crazy. Should we do a part two? Let us know in the comments Speaking down below. Through. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for exclusive lists. And I'll see you next Get time talking. with some more wrestling content. Okay, there we go. Just had to, you know, let the video like end off. But no, that's what I was going to say. It was pretty cool. Our truth the other day, he, uh, he liked one of the tweets that I sent him. I thought that was sick, but... Anyways, um, yeah, so I was what well, I was more so talking on in the beginning of the uh, Bret Hart and uh, Shawn Michaels, like the Montreal screw job. I mean, it was like seemed like it could have been on this list, but at the same time, it was like, you know, if they probably possibly it could be a part two to this video. This it seemed like there's so many of these things that happen, but. Anyways, now this is a pretty good video. Shout out to WrestleMania. If you guys haven't, go subscribe to him for more videos like this. Like, subscribe to me too, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching, and peace.